Paula, you with us? Hello. Sasha? Hello, darling. How are you, babe? See you nice not talking. <laughs> hey, I'm here. Hey, we're all here. <laughs> you know what, ma'am? I do well, not believe Ozzy. Sorry. I saw fairies it. wearing cro- I saw fairies wearing Crocs, not boots. <laughs> <laughs> Fairies wear clocks and you ass. gotta believe it. <laughs> I kicked his ass for wearing Crocs too. <laughs> no, that'll never happen. Not in any universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I tell you what, I've just had the most epic drive to Leeds, from Leeds to Eden, from Eden to Bradford, from Bradford back to Liverpool. On the way back from Liverpool, there uh, from Leeds to Liverpool. I missed my turning, and I ended up by what's called the Trafford Centre. And uh, so I did a loop round, drove a couple of miles back, took a left, took a right on the right road. And then as we turned the corner, we were back by the old Trafford Centre. And that is just impossible. You what now? Yeah, exactly. You... Yeah, and I was yeah, like, we, we turned the corner... And I was expecting to be on the M62 coming up into Liverpool. And we turned the corner and we were back by the Old Trafford Centre. And I just said to Paula, how the fuck did we get here? And she's like, what, where are we? We'd just gone past it. She'd just asked us about the football match that was going on in it. You know, is that Man City or Man U? I was like, I don't know. And, uh, we, you know, we drove a couple of miles down the road and then we ended up right back there. I tell you, my head is gone like, boof. Like, it's just not possible. It's just not what happened. It's just not possible. Well, did you have any missing time or anything weird no, like that? you know what? It's, a, it's an hour and a half drive, okay, okay, from uh, Leeds to Liverpool. Normally, I put my foot down, uh, and I mean properly put my foot down. Today, I was cruising 80, you know, a bit more than that. Not really my speed. Yet. I'm already at my destination when I get in the car to set off. And uh, and uh, we got lost twice and got here in an hour. So, you know, that's just not possible. Hour and a half? It, it should have taken that time, yeah. And we got here in an hour and we'd been lost twice. Paula, I'm a, I'm a bullshitting. I think you guys were smoking and tripping because that's all that you do. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I, I, I can't even explain it. I cannot even tell you how my brain feels right now. Uh, it, it's just like it feels like it overinflated. Rapid. Boom. Because uh, I just looked at Paul. I was just like, how the fuck did we get here? <laughs> like, Can you account we, for all your time? We should be, well, Guy, we've gained time. The journey should have taken an hour and 15, an hour and, you know, 30, taking it at 70. Now, I was running at about 80. And, uh, you know, we got here in an hour and we got lost. And then we got lost again however something happened we ended up back where we were and we had to go back around again so we should have been even longer so what do you make of that it's, it's only me here Paul <laughs> <laughs> oh, back me up here love come on Luffy, I'm here <laughs> this one out on my own. <laughs> Where's Guy? It don't matter where Guy is, right? <laughs> somewhere. But that really, really okay, yeah. was somewhat weird. It, weird it? it really weird. Considering conversation we had beforehand. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, I mean, what do we ever talk about, though, apart from that? Well, that's it. You yeah. know. But how, how could we do an hour and a half, or an hour, maybe, say an hour and 15, yeah? And we got lost twice, and we still got here in an hour. An hour. Not yeah. even. <coughs> it's not. It's not possible. 
<laughs> it's just not fucking possible. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, hello world and everybody in it and all the rest of it out there. <sighs> we have got Paula here again. Hiya. <laughs> and this time, Paula's going to do more talking than me. It's <laughs> 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 a bit of a do my little self, but... Uh, you know, you bring so much out of me, I think. You know what I mean? Oh, me? Yeah. All right, okay. Well, because we're so alike, aren't we? Well, that's it, yeah. You know. And that's how, like, uh, recently, um, I was moping about, I was having a bit of a sad sack day, and, and I said to my fella, Dave, I was like, oh, do you know what? I don't know what I'd do if this left, if they went away, if this all changed, and... In 10 years' time, I would have talked myself out of all of it. I wouldn't believe it anymore myself. Uh, I, I think, like, I've been nothing if this left now. And then I went on Facebook, and Paul the status is, is it, uh, is it wrong to, to miss them when they haven't been for a little while, uh, feel torn to pieces? I'm sat here at home feeling all sad sack and thinking, oh, God, what would I do if it left me? Paul has sat um, Feeling like a sad sack, thinking, oh, what would I do if I left me? No, I think that's pretty, yeah. pretty bonkers. You know, I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we don't always feel like that. You know, it's not like, oh, well, you always feel like that, so you're gonna do that, yeah. But uh, no, I thought that was quite significant. We must be symbiotic. <laughs> 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 Oh my God! Someone security you... lights just come on in the back garden, right? And the house opposite yeah. completely crap myself. <laughs> 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 it looked like a light in the sky. Oh right. Okay, this is going to be a fun show. I'll just put a bit down. I'll put myself on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, you were saying something uh, last Friday before everything went techno wang about Max. Yes, Max Schnellick. Uh he was snowboarding in Slavia. Uh, he totally lives a life, man. Works all summer and then goes out there and just snowboards all, you know, all winter season. Yeah. And he fell and some snowboarder ran him over, dislocated his collarbone and, uh, yeah, it really wow. messed him up. So and the guy wow. didn't even stop. But, oh, uh, it's we love you, man. Right. I'm and, uh, to decipher that, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, Max. That's rough. It's you getting better. I like Max, actually. I talked to Max a little bit. He's funny. <laughs> My sister was uh, here last week and, uh, with a pot on her arm because she'd gone snowboarding for the first time and uh, fell and broke her wrist on the first day. <laughs> That's totally me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, my God. I mean, it's obviously dangerous, you know. I think it's one to avoid. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you're like on powder and stuff like that, like uh, a lot of times when they when they teach people to ski, it's on like what they call the bunny hill, and that's all ice hill, and that's all ice. It's like learning to ski on an ice cube. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, falling down and going boom, and well, no. I always end up in the bar. <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> I'll go skiing a couple of times and get tired of falling down, running into trees. <laughs> I haven't got the knees for skis. <laughs> well, I'm an old woman. Why I've got I've got infomaniac housewife's knee. <laughs> so anyway, fire. Do what? What? Drink it some whiskey. Whiskey. Oh no, I think stick to my wine. So to be wine and warmth. I mean, you know, it looks like a whole load of uh, pain to me. Um, I think I'm just too uh, in the comfy zone for that kind of activity. I just want to shop about the floor, you know. <laughs> Warm. You guys no, got we... to uh, kind of uh, get together and try to figure out what happened today. Oh, man, that was just so weird. But like, you know, yeah. we were saying, Paula was saying to me, she says, I don't know why they freak us out so much. She says, I know that they're ugly uh, and that's pretty freaky, but they've never hurt me. And she said, well, apart from the time when they put that thing in my back. And then 
that's what she was saying as I turned this corner and went with the ear. And then, like, about 30 seconds later, she goes, oh, my back's hurting. Oh, my God, but, you know, right, really bad pain. Uh, I was like, fuck off. <laughs> right, okay, so we've just gone round this corner and we've ended up somewhere else. You were just talking about your back hurting and now your back hurts. <laughs> uh, stop the world, I want to get off. <laughs> oh, swear to God, that really happened. Mm-hmm. I was all really, we were all uh, chattering, weren't we? And yeah. Really yeah. buzzing, and, and when that happened, we just totally went quiet. And then we were like, uh, quiet, rest of journey. Yeah. Mm. Uh, like, uh, just completely perplexed. Uh, and it's just, and it, and it is, it's like a feeling in my brain that, like, uh, what, how, how the hell? How was it? Oh, I don't know, man. That was bizarre, but you know, there's nothing other than just driving. <laughs> you know, it's so strange. What we need to do for now on is start uh, get a little video recorder, and when you go on these trips, it's like film the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, this is it. I don't even keep a diary, guy, because that much goes on. It's just little things, mostly, and little whoa, and uh, and some big stuff. And um, it's like every everything that's happened, it's like it's something of its own. Uh, you know, like the experience. It's uh, you forget, and then something might you remember, later, or you might remember a bit of it, or whatever. But then you have another experience, but you don't connect to one. Before because it's totally new it's totally again the feeling like you never get used to it it's like a, it you know like it's like a partition yeah. uh, and that Plus keeps happening probably... so it's like it's always like the first time but recently it's like i've had these partitions removed and i've seen a full picture of what's gone on in this sort of past time you know like 10 years or whatever and and i thought how the hell did i not even see that you know it's weird it's like, i can't can't explain it. It's like every single experience is a new one, but now there's most of them are connected. Do you know what I mean? And I can see it, but I could never see it before. You know? They're new. Listen, they're new, and you get that feeling every time. And trust me, it's nothing you get used to ever. Yeah. It's, you know, your body reacting to something that shouldn't be happening. Well, this and, is it. Know, it makes me wonder if it's biological rather than psychological. Yeah, I bet it is biological. No, I don't know if the brain on some primitive level, or... like of how. Yeah, like of how you know, do you just react to things? I know, uh, you know, I've had stuff uh, here recently, and I uh, last week I had a uh, tug on my shirt. Again, and, you get that uh, a lot, don't you? Yeah, and I'm just like. You know, I wasn't ready for it, yeah. you know, and I was just like, I was in the middle trying to concentrate, doing stuff, and it only happens in this one area of the house. Yeah. And uh, uh, at first I thought it was a fan, and I'm like, well, the fan's blowing the other way. You know, I mean, it was a uh, tug, uh, you know, on my shirt, and I just I just said, F this, and got up. I'm well, not in the mood not- to deal with this right now. You know I've what never I mean? had and a tug, but I've had a poke, and it's a definite, you know it, you know, that that's got like... Your jeans touching somewhere, or you know, what yeah. I mean, you know, it, it feels exactly as it is, isn't it? You feel the shirt pull away. You feel the, uh, you know, you feel it touching your skin. Sometimes you feel the pressure of being touched. Uh, you know that sort of thing of what yeah. it would feel like if a finger touched you. Yeah. You know. Totally. Well, I think we're obviously experiencing. Uh, I don't know t- different. Uh, realities. I mean, the, I, I can't understand how, uh, you know, some of the experiences that we have are uh, not physical, but they're real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, they we are physical. We can't even define, like, reality, and but we, when we do, we define it as from a perspective of we are the centre of that reality. And that reality exists for us, which it does because it's the only reality that we can detect. But for other creatures on it, they all detect a completely different reality. You know, and uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I've just been thinking so much recently, you know what I mean, about all of this. 
how can these experiences be where I'm still in bed, but I'm having these dreams that are completely vivid. Like, yeah. A couple of weeks you know, ago, I had a dream about me talking to Joe Montaldo. I'm stood face to face with him, and I'm watching this conversation go on from over from a different point of view. Do you know Was what I mean? Was it a but, nightmare? <laughs> no. Oh, I'll give up. <laughs> I love you, Joe. <laughs> But I would say that Paul, is, 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 when I was looking at him face on, his eyes weren't right. But when I was looking at him from a distance, he looked like he does. Anyway, you know, it's like his eyes were bigger somehow. But, you know, it, it was a dream state, but it felt absolutely real, you know what I mean? And in these dreams that we have, sometimes they say the dreams, dreams cannot scar you for life. They can't detrimentally suddenly affect your behavior, you know, and... I don't uh, put much weight into, at least in my experience, put from a, put much weight into uh, dreams. I know, like uh, uh, spirits will contact you through a dream, uh, and it's usually uh, it's not fragmented. It's not you know crazy nutsoid. You know, it's you know hi son you know, or something like that, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because you've gotten, Sasha, you've gotten, you know, you were talking about that partition, how you, everything sectioned off. Yeah. And your brain is just dealing with all these little pieces, you know, and uh, of all these little different experiences. And maybe, uh, you know, you haven't put it all together yet, and your brain's just got all this fragmented stuff. And so when you dream, it's trying to make heads or tail of, tails of it or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know, because, but some of my dreams, I'm sure they're not dreams. Oh, I'm sure too. But uh, I'm just saying, you know, in general, uh, you can't have a, co- a cohesive dream where you're actually getting a message and stuff like that unless you have a grasp of what's going on in your waking in your waking yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. mind. You know what I mean? Because your brain yeah, yeah. is just going to take, it's just going to take what it has and what it understands and what you yeah. understand it and just kind of well, mishmash together. Well, it's interesting that you say that because this dream that I had of me and Joe, we were leaning against something and my brain was trying to tell me that it was a vending machine. I knew that it wasn't a vending machine, but I knew that my brain was just trying to find the nearest match to keep itself happy. But I wouldn't let it do that because I knew that it wasn't a vending machine because there were no products in it. It was like a red square and it had a like a cream panel in the front. But it had more stuff going on. I don't know if there were buttons or whatever. I can't really remember. But my brain was going, vending machine, vending machine. And, but part of my brain was going, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. So I don't know what it was, but I know it wasn't a vending machine. But my brain was trying to fit that imagery in there just to sort of make the situation seem normal. You right, know. And, and people do that all the time, even in the sciences, you know. Yeah. They'll have a couple pieces, like a jawbone or something, and then they'll, you know, add all this stuff to it to make it a cohesive to make it a cohesive thing. You yeah, know? yeah, to make it make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, but I'll tell know. you what, it's the strangest life ever. <laughs> and then when I meet people like Paul and I hear their stuff, I just think, oh, I, I, you know what I mean? I just try not to dwell on things. So, like, if something uh, out of the ordinary does happen, I'm just, that's part of my reality, so it doesn't, uh, my fuck me, you know what I mean? Mm. Where I'm in therapy, you know, and shit like that. <laughs> I can, I can, I can, <laughs> I can accept things when they happen. You know, they may catch me off guard and give me the chills and the goosebumps and the hair stands up because your body reacts a certain way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to that, you know, and uh, so that distance is almost like a gullible naivety, isn't it? And it's self protection as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, one of Paul's experiences, you know, I think she talked about it with us last time with the uh, the glass tube, or the, the, the tube of light that came out through the window, and then the ball of light that appeared above her head. Well, you know, this could all be like, what we say, subjective, this, subjective, that. And you asked about a friend who was uh, with her, and you asked, uh, you know, if you'd be able to get hold of her, and, uh, well, <laughs> Paula, why don't you step in here and tell, uh, hey, tell yeah. us what, what Wow, yeah, 
Right. It's been eight years since I saw my friend who actually witnessed this. Um, my daughter had got in contact with her two sons on Facebook. Um, and then the day after she got in contact with me, uh, as a friend request, and I thought, well, do I accept it, daughter? Because I haven't spoke to her for eight years and we fell out on a few bad terms over stuff. And uh, I accepted it and um, had a conversation about what's been happening in the past eight years. And then I actually said to her, can you remember that sort of thing? But I didn't actually say that. I said, do you remember the day that we took them kids to school, nursery that they were at? And... Uh, I said, would you like to come back for a drink with mine? Like I said last time, coffee. And uh, she said, and she took it from there, and she said, yeah, we actually sat at the fireplace. She said, and there was a ball of tube, a tube with a ball, and it hovered above my head. And she stood up and said, what the fuck was that? And she said, the ice, I had actually gone drip white, and I looked really healthy, I had a big smile on my face, even though I don't remember having this big smile on my face. And then um, I said, well, what did we do after that? I didn't want to put words in her head. Yeah. You know, so I said, well, what did we do after that? Can you remember, Jackie? She went, yeah, of course I can. We went over to the supermarket, and she said, and you touched them things on the fridge, and it were all static. And she said, and it did it for days. So there's my witness. <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. just, and I was like so overwhelmed by it. I was nearly crying. I was like, I can't believe this. Yeah. So, <clears throat> it's just amazing that I've actually got, you know, someone from such a long time ago that's exactly what happened. And they came yeah. up just after you talking about it uh, publicly as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's like just unreal. Uh, <sighs> I don't know. What, well, I mean, what, uh, what's some of the the later stuff that's happened? Uh, are you are you having to deal with? Uh, uh, how are you dealing with it personally? Which which bit? Like, like do like do talking? Uh, like do talking it out? Do you have to go through therapy on your meds or, or whatever? When? No. Okay. It's just normal to me now. Everything just feels like as real as it does now, as well as real as it does it does when it happens in my dreams or whatever. Do you understand that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you do, yeah. <laughs> you must. It's just not. I think it's because when I got in contact with you, Sasha. Um, for that, it was like it was, you know, everything was just whatever I dreamt, whatever I saw, it, it was like, did I make that up in my head? Did I just make that up? Because I've had no actual witnesses to confirm that I, I'm, I was right, you know. And then when I got in contact with you, Sasha, and I thought, hang on a minute, if if other people are going through what I am going through, and what I've been through since I was four, then I'm right somewhere. Mm. It's part of my reality. And, and what's changed for you since you started talking about it then, since, you know, before you met me? No, I'm not. I've, where, no, were I'm you, where were you before and where are you now? Before, right, before before I met you, the, yeah. the before, well, up to the day that I met you, I couldn't even look at a book, uh, you know, like Aliens or whatever. I couldn't even, you know, if I saw a picture of an alien. No, that book had to be closed instantly and I would shake, I'd shiver, I'd get a lot of sweat, I'd feel sick. But now I can open a book, I can look at it a few minutes, close the book, turn away or whatever. I have a bit of fear but I look at it now and, and I think, do you know what? They they never did actually. They didn't give me a, a show me any time. All the shows were good things. And it was you Sasha that helped me think that because you'd gone through similar things. We all go through similar things. Yeah. But um no two things I would say are the same. Similar, not the same. So I know that I'm not, I wasn't the only one and um yeah, can talk about it freely, openly. 
Yeah. Yeah. You have to get in with the right people. If That's you get it. in with the wrong people, when you're having these experiences, you know, yeah. you know you're fucked. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it'll make it'll make it worse. It'll just confuse you more because, you know, you find someone like Sasha, Sasha and some of these other people uh, that are doing uh, actually doing the research and not sitting on the internet and talking about Star Brothers and you know <laughs> Galactic Veterans and Light and all these people. They're just uh, you know, uh, they 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 literally, when it comes to this stuff, are in a fantasy land, you know, because none of that exists. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. exist, you know. Uh, so when when you uh, meet someone like that, you either go over the edge, or you actually just uh, withdraw even more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just Papa. to get away, like like mm-hmm. God, these people are nuts, yeah. and now everybody else well. doesn't think I'm nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have felt uh, insane over this, you know, completely stuck, trapped in my own head, just feeling like I'm screaming. I mean, I don't feel like that now because I don't keep it to myself and I'm not on my own. You know, um, yeah. I've seen on my um, Amash video that somebody had put, oh, this woman is seriously deluded, and I'm like, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like I I don't know I don't say that I know what's going on. Uh, this is what I think right now, and that's when I did those videos. They were like two two years ago. I don't even think the same anymore. You know I mean, I've, I've actually got in touch with uh, Joanna yeah. and Miles and said we need to update this because I don't and all of that is so so five minutes ago, you know. Um, and especially about Rendlesham and all that. I don't even it's just not what I think. And uh, now I I can see things a little bit more clearly and I don't even live in that place of fear. So, you know, you know all the things that I've said uh can sound like I'm being all poor me. I'm not at all. I'm just like, this is what it was like, this is what it felt like and that's that's where I was. It's not where I am now. Sometimes I am, you know what I mean? Because you go in and out of it. I can get out of it now. I couldn't get out of it before. And the only way that I have actually got out with it is, like, uh, having friends like you, Guy, and Joe, and uh, Michael, Mufon and Mike, you know, and other people. There's loads of them. But, uh, and then meeting Paula, it was like, God almighty, it's like looking in a mirror, listening to myself. <laughs> you know? Um, but then other people's synchronicities, when they tell you their, their stories, like, uh, you just think, oh, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but it's definitely not nothing. Yeah. You know what? It's okay not to know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. As long as you continue to uh, uh, walk, have that personal journey. Yeah. Um, it's when you, uh, you know, it's when you stop doing that and shut down that, uh, you know, that's when you, uh, that's when uh, the PSTV and all that uh, overtakes you, and you're, you know, you're meted out, and uh, you just go numb. I know because it happened to me. Yeah. You know, uh, I basically had to uh, back in, uh, I don't know, 2005 or whatever. I basically uh, really felt the need to go out and uh, get in touch with people. Because, uh, you know, I was spiritually dead. I had to do something. I knew mm. things were happening and happening to me. Uh, but I was completely dealing with it on my own, which a lot of people were, you know, besides myself. It's not just me. Yeah, and, we uh, have, we're kind of conditioned into thinking that we have to do that, don't we? Yeah, and, you know, I just started uh, uh, joining forums and, uh, you know, and I met a lot of good people. A lot of smart what, year, what, what year was that? Uh, that was around 2004, 2005, right in there. Exactly, that's exactly when I uh, burst into the scene. Rolla, jibber jabber. You think you talk a lot now? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember Sasha uh, when me and Jeff first interviewed you. You know, you were uh, uh, we all were at the time a little uh, uh, off the off the rails, but that was High good. End. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. It was good. It's part of the walk. It's part of the healing process. It's like the stages you go to to get to your end result. Yeah. You know, like the stages when you find out you're going to die. There's all these different things. And finally, you just, uh, you know, or someone else dies or whatever. You know, you just, uh, you can you can move on. But you have to go through that. It's like yeah. a trial by fire. It's like an I know, but I mean, we're, what we're trying to do is sort of, like, and I think Paula will agree with me here, is when you start to realize this, when you look back on your life and, you oh, you, you know, you've got all these memories coming up that uh, you'd forgotten, um, uh, and you realize that this kind of duality has been going on all of the time, uh, it's like when you look back, it's exactly. like I don't know what makes sense anymore now because I don't even that, the life that I've had, or thought I had, wasn't that at all. <laughs> but do you do you think that, Paula? I mean, when, yeah, like, yeah. now now that you've sort of like started to face things and uh, you know you've been really open and honest about it, do you think that when you look back on your life that it's all a bit fragmented and jumbled? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's all jumbled up through years. Um, I, I think, oh God! But you can uh, every, remember when the experience. I can remember. I can remember the, the how old I was. Yeah. On everyone, well, practically every one of them, how old I was. When this, I had this dream at the age of twenty-five, and I was twelve year old in the dream. Yeah. You know, like I've, like I said before on the show, um, it's the clothes that I'm wearing, what clothes, what other people are wearing, furniture around me. Yeah. You know that. I don't think that's an actual dream, though. I think it's just something I'm remembering through a dream. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that actual dream then that are taking place there and then that are dreams. Oh, that you're having They are realities. Oh, memories in dreams. Yeah, it, it's so... Uh, oh, God, I'd get sure. sure. something like that. Yeah. You know? You bet. You bet memories are in dreams. Yeah. 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 I know that uh, one one experience that you had that people were interested in hearing about uh, specifically a little bit in a bit more detail or whatever uh, was you know the one where you had the missing time where you were your friend yeah and you start thinking well, and with the police and that because you yeah. had quite a conversation with the police didn't you? and um, I know that that we were asked uh, I've been asked if you would. Go through that story again. Not story. <laughs> it's, I hate that. It's not I, a, yeah, because yeah, it sounds like it's made yeah. up. Tell us a Jack and Ari parlor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. So it's about that incident um, again because. Okay. Not, yeah. <laughs> well, no, because it, it, no, honestly, it's uh, it's it's interesting. It's really interesting. I mean, I thought it was fascinating, and then uh, the uh, the oh. one with the guy in the suit as well. That's a good one. Oh, right, yeah. Can I go through that one first? Yeah, yeah, of course. Right, right yeah, that's the one that where I was flying with an alien. <laughs> yeah. Right, um, well, this is this is a dream that took place. Uh, I was 13 years old um, when I had this dream. Um, in the dream, I was 25. And how I remember that is because of the child, uh, the age of my child at the time in the dream. Um <laughs> I won this, and uh, my friend in the dream, my friend had asked me, "Would you like to come to a beach party?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, okay, yeah." So, uh, where is this beach party? I'm thinking Blackpool or something. Yeah. Uh, oh no, no, it's on her street in the middle of the night. She's having it, you know. So, <laughs> okay, well, where are you going to get your sand from and your water? Uh, you know. Oh, yeah. well, hire, hire the sand, you know. <laughs> and as I, well, the funny thing about it, you know, dreams kind of skipped a bit, and I'm walking on the street, and uh, I see, you know, Sasha, the, the, when the building houses, the big, big cement yeah. thingies on, yeah. uh, on um, lorries and that, bags of that, yeah. but it was sand. Right. These big vats of water. And uh, they, they put these, like, things down, like, big circle things where they could put the sand in the water. We're talking, like, mid- middle at night again. Everyone's out on the street. Yeah. And um, I'm playing sand. I'm sat on the floor after I've had a bit of conversation with my mates and that. And I'm sat on the floor and I'm playing in this one of those big massive circle things in the sand with some kids making sandcastles. Yeah. And... 
But yet, the kids couldn't see me. The adults couldn't see me. As soon as I sat down, it was as if I wasn't there again, like in most dreams that I have, yeah. where they don't see me. And uh, as soon as I sat with these kids, I'm making sandcastles with them. I'm talking to these kids. And there were no no conversation back whatsoever. I'm thinking, hang on, they're not, they're not even, I'm not, I'm not here. Or they're not here. Or I'm invisible. Or, yeah. And then I'm trying to talk to adults. They're just blanking me. They're not saying all that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so as I'm sat there, this I, I see this tall figure walking towards me. I mean, bearing in mind it's midnight, uh, so it's only street lights, you know, that orange. Yeah. And uh, it's blocking light a bit. And um, when it kind of got closer, and it, it's really tall. I'd say it's about seven, seven and a half foot, eight foot. Yeah. And uh, it's got this blonde hair, and it's all slicked back. It's just cut below his ears. It, it's like a bob sort of thing, but slicked back. Yeah. Um, I mean, perfectly slipped back, you know, an air, not an air out of place. And it was like a golden blonde colour. And he has this suit on. He only looked about in his 20s, but then I couldn't put an edge on him because it was just so youthful. Yeah. Um, and he has this suit on, and it's I don't know whether it's dark blue or black or whatever, and it's pinstriped. And when I noticed him, he's, he didn't have any creases, you know, when you bend your yeah. hands and you get a crease or in the back of your trousers there's no creases, it was just pristine with his suit and it's like he put it on ironed and he hasn't moved in it Yeah. you know Yeah. <laughs> anyway and he looked down at me and he says basically would you like to go flying it's, but the funny thing about it is that it was like I knew this person I'd known this person all my life, but yet I couldn't recognise him uh, facially. You know, you just, had, you just had a sense of it. Yeah, yeah, it. a strong sense that I knew him, so I trusted this man. Um, and I said, "Well, why do I need to go flying? I don't want to go flying. I've never been flying, and I'm scared to go flying. Um, never been on an aeroplane. Blah blah blah." And he went, "No, no, not that sort of flying." And I said, "So what? What sort of flying? Other flying is there? You know?" Mm. So he says, "Well." I want, I want you to come with me and I'll show you. I'm going to take you flying. Okay, then whatever. So, me trusting him. Goes to end of this snicket ginnel, as they call it, or alleyway. Alley, alleyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the end of the street and uh, nobody saw him either. Walking, we're walking through crowds of people and nobody saw us. You know, all my friends are doing their own thing and that. So he takes me to the end of this ginnel and he says, right, I want you to close your eyes. You're going to feel very lightweight. You'll feel lightweight as soon as, you know, you're going to be lifting off the ground. You're going to feel very lightweight. Well, I'm thinking, well, this isn't no aeroplane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then I kind of, my mind just went totally relaxed and I thought, you just take it in, Paula, go with the flow sort of thing. <laughs> and, uh and he said, you're going to feel really, really lightweight and you're going to, I don't know, you just feel good. And it was describing how I feel. Yeah. Okay, he said, right, I just want you to stand still. You can hold my hand if you want. And I, well, I did, I held his hand. I thought, well, what if I fall or something, you know. Uh. Um, and I, I remember lifting off the ground and as soon as my feet I could feel my feet coming off the ground to my toes uh. and all my body weight just went and um, he said right I want you to lean slightly forward I could feel myself still going up and up uh. but very slowly and he said I want you to lean slightly forward like you would as if you're going to set off swimming and put your arm kind of out but down a bit um, and if you feel the need to keep an hold of me and keep an hold of me, well, we're holding it that tight. Um, and then all I remember is kind of a, a forward motion and the wind on my face, it was like a lovely warm breeze on my face. And um, 
it, it just it's like I, I could hear movement, you know, ground and stuff, whether that would be leaves floating about or... Yeah. Um, and it was just so, such a wonderful feeling. This, I, I knew I was flying. And then he said to me, a bit further on, I, I knew I'd gone at some distance. Um, and I said, I'm going to tell you when to open your eyes. I said, okay. And then so, you know, I flew a bit more. He says, right, I want you to open your eyes. I opened them um, and I was near enough the top of the street lighting. Yeah. I looked down, I panicked for a moment, so I grasped his hand really tight at this point. And I'm looking down, and I'm looking down to the right of me, see the school that my daughter went to. Um, and at the other side, there's a mill, and we're still moving along. And I, I looked, uh, uh, I wasn't bothered at that moment at looking at him uh. as so much as my surroundings, thinking, wow, you know, what, I'm up here. Yeah. And you know how how the hell has this happened? <laughs> and then it was like, and I, I, I was going to say something. I can't remember what I was going to say to him because as soon as I looked at him, it was a great. And so that took it all out of me. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck's this sort of thing? And he's just looking at me, and it, and I'm thinking, you're an alien. You're great. Right? You're an alien. How the hell has that happened? One minute you were a tall bloke with long hair, about seven, eight foot tall, uh. and now you're a grey. And it, and and as we, he it said, it's okay, calm down, it's okay. But it, it's, it wasn't speaking; it was coming from in my mind. Yeah. Um, and as we're moving along, he said, you need to know this. You need to know this. I'm teaching you it because you really need to know how to do this on your own. And then. We got to end of this like snicket, and then I, I, I kind of just woke up. That was it, uh, and I, I remember that clear as day. Amazing. Just, um, I've just sort of been uh, reading communion. I've never read it before. Clear as day. Amazing. Just, um, I've just sort of been uh, reading communion. I've never read it before, uh, and. W- Whitley Strieber describes how he sees this uh, little grey turn up, but it's got a suit on, and it's yes. so rigid and stiff. It looks, and, you know, sort of like neat, and it looks like cardboard. You know, when you was, that, when that I read, sounds very similar, yeah. To, well, when I read it, it reminded it, yeah. me of that. Um, you know, uh, there's a few things I can't remember. I, t- I talked to you about them in the car a bit, I think, but. Uh, yeah. You know, there's there's just so many things that I recognise, like um, when I had a, a flying thing, I, I think I've talked, I've talked about it in a man a lot of times, but uh, I, I was out, I was flying, I was look, oh, like, you know, looking at these fields and uh, there was a pond and it looked lit like there was a full moon, but I don't actually remember seeing any moon, it was like everything on its own glow. <clears throat> and I realised that I had to it up, which you normally do when you find yourself in that situation. And I just thought the stars, I want to mm. see the stars. But as soon as I thought it, I was already moving upwards. And like you said, I remember the, the wind in my face and I remember yeah. my head and hearing it. Uh, yeah. You know, and just being aware of my clothes flapping. Um, and I was looking at the stars and there were just loads of them. And I was elated. It was like being on a motorbike without a helmet on, you know what I mean? And then they all parted and there was just this big black patch. And actually thought to myself, they have moved out of the way so I don't smash into them. <laughs> but uh, mm. then I was actually in a, in a room, sat on a bench talking to a woman. There was loads of people. Oh, I can remember them talking. Uh, and, you know, some of them were stood up, some of them were sat down. Um, it's like a curved corridor with light coming out of the walls opposite me but I was sat talking to this woman and saying this is mad I know that I'm at home in bed asleep <laughs> I know yeah. I'm in bed I'm at home I'm asleep <laughs> she's just sort of smiling and nodding at me <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I am <laughs> I am in bed I am I am I am <laughs> <laughs> but, you know you do think some strange things and I think well when you're having dreams do you actually have that kind of thought processing going on mm, yeah. <laughs> you know like oh yeah the, the stars have moved so I don't crash into them you know you, the TV would just be like I don't know 
flying about or whatever. I, yeah, whatever. You know. Yeah. Dreams are hard to remember as well. You have to, oh, what was the dream? And, oh, my God, mm, I can remember. But yeah, I can remember all these. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, if it's a normal dream based on normal everyday things, I just can't remember. Yeah. It's all cut up and broken. And... But we're profoundly affected by some of these so-called dreams. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, it, like a real incident has happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've had stuff to where I wasn't a very nice person here recently. You know, it's like after uh, some sort of cataclysm or whatever, and I'm with people and we're uh, taking people's stuff. And we even kill people. And uh, it's one cohesive dream. You yeah. Know? Um, I don't know if I'm a bad guy, but in the context of the dream, you know, we're making a move on someone else's stuff. Uh, and we're taking it. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, that, that's kind of, you know, and then to kill someone in the dream is kind of bums you out during the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a proper weird one like that where I was in this house and it had all these really mad artifacts and big furniture that were all kind of swathed in cloth and all these people were coming in and moving all the stuff out and I started panicking, oh my God, they're going to find all the dead bodies. <laughs> and I knew that they were picking up this sofa that wasn't really a sofa, it was something that I'd, I had killed someone and I'd wrapped them all up in blankets and made this thing look like a, uh, someone to sit on <laughs> right. but uh, <laughs> you know, I was really panicking, I was thinking oh, you know, and, and re- remembering, oh my god, there's one there there's one here, there's, you know and I've had it a few times where I've thought, oh shit, I've murdered so and so, and where's the body? Where's the body gone? And I'm looking for it. And it, uh, you know, well, you're going to murder someone. You know what I mean? <laughs> <I should> think, <laughs> but yeah, in these, in these dreams, it's always something in this house. It's always in a house, and I'm being chased by something, and I know I am, but I can never feel it until it's too late, until it's got me. And it can pick me up, move me around, throw me a pin against the wall, make me think that I can do things like spin in midair. And then I'll go and try and show mm. somebody, look what I can do. And I just look like a tick because I can't actually yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. But they feel real. And I have physical feelings with them. It's like when I get picked up, it's like, oh, my God, I have muscles of them in my ribs. Do you know what I mean? So, it, and I, so I'm kind of half awake, but not awake, but I'm aware of physical sensations in my body. And these dreams just don't look like it. It's like, well, you know, I don't know. Oh. It's not your physical brain or body that's having the actual dream. Maybe it's, uh, you know, your energy or soul or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's kind of trapped in a body. So, mm. you know, maybe, maybe it's making up its own stuff or whatever. Or maybe you it's know? remembering shit that it did before when it was in that happy, etheric place and it got yeah. sent to earth to be human. <laughs> That old teacher. <laughs> oh, I was a mass murderer in a in a previous incarnation of some kind. Right, that's comforting. <laughs> I can write down the kind in. So, that would right, suck okay. finding that out. So what? What sucks? It would suck finding that out if you were uh, yeah, think, yeah. a murder. You know what I mean? You're just like, damn. It would explain a lot of the shit that I've gone through. <laughs> yeah, okay, I deserved all that. Explain a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let's get back to that other one. Oh, which one now? The one where you were with your friend walking down the oh, it was. alley, it was. you know, thing. Yeah, yeah. And you saw the, the big uh, three-pronged... It's like, it's, yeah, it's like an invert. I call it inverted triangle, which... A rounded edges, yeah. yeah. So we, we, all of it, you want me? Yeah, yeah. Because people it. have asked about this again. I must have interrupted oh, your jibber jabber dover right, okay. from it, but okay. Can I ask why they've asked about it again? Because oh. I think they found it really interesting, and the, uh, you know, um, and I know that Bill was asking for a bit more of the the part where you were involved with the police officer at the end because when you told me um, yeah. about that, that you you, would, you talked a little bit about it then you did when we were on the show. Now, if you don't want to talk about it, fine, but um, I don't think there's anything too personal in that. that no, 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 no. Well, 
Yeah, so, well, I won't start from right beginning, but anyway, so I'll, if I start from Gino, yeah. um, Alleyway, as I'm walking down there, I'm behind her, she's in front of me, and um, it's like the houses have stopped, the woods are at, to the right of me, and uh, and I see the light, a light coming from this object. Well, I couldn't make out what the object was at the time. Um, and I see a light fanning down onto the water. Um, the water was entirely lit up where, you know, this fan was coming down. I couldn't say whether it was circular shape or whatever. I just saw the shape of, you know, the light as a fan yeah. on water. Um, I couldn't see under the surface of the water, just on the top. So you could see the ripples, yeah? And as my eyes like adjusted to the light, then well, adjusted to the darkness, sorry, from looking at that brilliant white light that was coming down. Yeah. Um, it's when I saw the inverted triangle type thing. Yeah. The red, blue, and green light on each, well, they're not corners, whatever they are, these points, yeah? So you've got light, right, so what it is, it's like a circle, a sensor circle of light, and it's got like three rounded, like three propeller blades almost. It's, yeah, propellers, it's yeah. like a propeller, yeah. I've, I've seen exactly the drawing. Like that. You know, yeah. I couldn't even describe it myself like that, you well, know. Well, I've seen the drawing that you've done, so that's what it reminded um, me of. Yeah, and yeah. it's uh, going in a, a clockwise motion. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's just turning, I'm not quite motion, very slowly. Yeah. yeah. And then I thought, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, run. And we run up this snicket, and as we're running up this snicket, I just can't remember nothing from that until I'm walking on my own at the bottom of the street, going up, this, turning the corner, going up the street, and seeing loads of kids. Um, running about panicking, saying she's here, she's here. Um, and, you know, I could see my policeman walking down garden path and he's, where have you been? Well, I, I really don't know. I don't know where I've been. Well, where did you go? Out to me, no, that's in my mates, blah, blah, blah. Well, where have you been between 8 o'clock at night and 5 to midnight? I don't know. But, as I, it's like, I got questioned again the day after, and it's like, just believe what I say because I really do not know where I went. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. You know, and I, to have that and not be believed all your life. And how old were you? I was twelve. Twelve. Yeah, twelve, thirteen. It was either twelve or thirteen. How did you feel, right? As you know, at that time when you walked back up and everybody, it was obvious that. That, you know, there was some commotion well, going on about Well, you, I didn't know it was all to do with me. And then she's here, she's here. When they said she's here, she's here, I automatically thought it was something some had happened to uh, one of my members of the family. Yeah. You know, why would someone at 8 o'clock at night have a big deal with me thinking it were 8 o'clock at night? Yeah. You know, and it wasn't. It was 5 to midnight. So walking up that street... I was just thinking, what 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 the hell's going on, like? Yeah. You know. And now I could understand it if I knew it was five to midnight, and they're saying she's here, she's here, and I'm thinking, shit, I'm gonna get right fucking telling off here. But it wasn't because I just thought it were eight o'clock or something. So what about the friend that was with you initially when you both ran off? I don't know. She went on. She wasn't with me at all when. I that when I kind of appeared at the bottom of the street uh. um, from not remembering anything to walk on her, she was not with me at all. What does, did she remember? Didn't you say, like, oh, I was with so and so? and Yeah, I said, oh, it's my friend, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they, didn't, uh, she, they said that she'd been home the day after. My nan said, well, when police have been in contact the day after and stuff like that, because uh. I thought, well, what, where, where's she been, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the, I don't, they said that she'd gone home ages after that. So but where she, the hell had I been? Can't she remember you? No, being there or? no, she can't even remember anything like that. She remembers that. When I questioned her, I mean, I don't see, I haven't seen her for years. Mm. Um, 
but when I questioned her about saying that, she says, oh, yeah, we definitely saw that, you know, but she, she, even she didn't remember how she got home, mm. you know? Mm. So, but yet, when the police, I mean, I looked into it later on, and the police said, no, she'd been home hours before I turned up. So, uh, how can I... How can I justify myself when I don't even know myself? You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's not that, isn't it? Yeah. And the other one that I like, your story I like, is the uh, one of your neighbour, what your neighbour saw, you know, the rugby ball thing. Oh, rugby ball. Um, right. Age, you see, I know my age is age 29 on that one. All right, 19, sorry. Yeah, 19. And... Um, she used to go to bed, I used to go to bed right early, me, or right early bed, I think late, uh, latest I went to bed, right, 11 o'clock at night or something like that. And uh, she got, uh, she was right nosy in that, you know, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she knew everything because she stayed up till stupid o'clock in the morning, so it was like, you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. What she'd done is she, next day, I'd, I'd got up, gone to bed, next day I get up and I see her having a cigarette in the bottom of the garden. Uh, in her garden next to mine and she said oh come here come here you'll never guess what I saw last night blah 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 anyway uh, so she told me that she's where I live now Sasha you know mm-hmm. which I was saying well where I was living at the time is opposite at number 17 which we also own yeah um, which was my grandma's where all, most of the events took place except the um, what is it where the, the look for a window you know because you've lived in that that street, haven't you, all your life? All my life, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so she calls me at the bottom of the garden, and she said that what she'd seen, she'd gone out for a cigarette at 2 o'clock in the morning, just before she'd gone to bed. And it was a lovely summer night, and she'd gone out, and she looked, she caught something. She's looking up and down the street, and she catches something above, uh, like a reflection mm. type thing. And she, you know, won't lie, it was like, metal reflection yeah. and uh, she said it was rolling down um, number 16 because I lived at 17 then at my grandma's house at 16 that I'm in now which were my mum's yeah. and she looked up and she saw this rugby ball flying uh, not flying, dropping from the sky and rolling down um, like like You'd push a rugby ball, it kind yeah. of wobbles, doesn't yeah, it? Because yeah. the shape of it. And it, it was wobbling very slowly uh, down my roof. Well, it was my mum's roof at that time, it's mine now. But it was wobbling. And then it kind of, it looked like it kind of going to fall off the roof. And as it did, it, it stopped right outside the bedroom window and then kind of just went straight up back in there. And it was, she, she described it as like being bigger than a rugby ball size, but not too overly big, you know. Yeah. Um, it, metallic, silverish, silver grey metallic. Yeah. And that were it, really. Well, it, well, I don't know what it was, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was like, well, Oh, that's strange sort of thing. What what falls from the sky, rolls down your roof really slowly, stops outside your bedroom window for about three seconds and then just zooms off into the sky upwards. It must have been your transporter pod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got wrong house thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> your mum's then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I'd lived there since... I was born, yeah. and then I moved in with my grandma over the road at number 17, yeah. at, you know, at five, six year old, and I stayed there until my grandma died, you know, so, yeah. so it's both houses, I've had these events at all my life, yeah. But you're saying quite a lot of stuff as well, aren't you, you told me about a few things that you're saying, you... I, took some yeah. pho- I took some photographs actually of your street and what have you, and places that you've seen things and yeah yeah 
fuck me, I don't even, you don't even have to go on sky watches, do you? Just have to look out your window every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I've only ever actually seen UFOs twice, uh, three <laughs> times, sorry. It's nearly based on aliens and my dreams. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah, we, I, I don't know, which one would you like me to go on about? I could actually go on about the one where um, the drug dealers yeah. and the aliens show me drug dealers. Yeah. Go on. All right. Um, well, I think when I look back at this and I think this fits in with why the alien actually, the great, the first one where um, where they had that beach party on the street yeah. and they took me fine and said, you need to learn this. And uh, when I look back now and I'm thinking, yeah, and I know why, you, think, you know. But anyway, um, I had this dream. Uh, this was last year, yeah, I had this dream at, and uh, I'd, it were like, in the dream, um, I'd come out and I'd gone through my window. Um, it was just like passing, it's like something hitting me, and then I'm out of it again. Yeah. Like popping you know, I, I didn't go liquid. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't go liquidified. I don't yeah. like that. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's something like that. You know, you could, you could feel the solidness, but it wasn't solid enough to stop you. You yeah. know. And then I remember kind of coming out of my bedroom window, and um, I couldn't see my body. I could see the top half of me, but not my legs. And I was looking down at two. Aliens and two great. Now one of them was stood in the middle of the street. They're both acting very human and suspicious looking. <laughs> now if they were human, I'd have thought, what are they up to? They're going to burgle somewhere on Nicky's car. Aliens acting like a couple so, of dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're acting like. You know, <laughs> and it's like you know, hands on hips and looking round and you know. Yeah. And I'm looking down, thinking, how strange. So. Um, <laughs> So that one of them is, is in the middle of the street and he's looking round, you know, like, well, I could imagine that if you're a burglar or something, you're going to look round, you know, who's watching sort of thing. And, and and the other one was going up where where my grandma lived. Uh, the, number seven, oh, it's all complicated, but um, he's going up the path next to where, where Kathy lived, who saw the rugby ball. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're on that bit now. We've got that bit straight. Her that saw the rugby ball is the that she moved out of about four oh god years ago. Um was going up that path. And as it got to the door, um the other one's still in the road kind of looking left looking and right. All suspicious so. and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, as if he were look out. Being a dodgy chav. <laughs> yeah, a chav, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All he needed was baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he gets up to the door, this other alien, and he started and he put his hands on the door casing, but he didn't actually put his hands on the door casing. He was holding his hands up and feeling uh, about an, I'd say an inch away from the door casing, all the way around the casing. And then he'd stop in parts and he'd look round and then it would carry on, it was like as if it was concentrating, and then it'd separate both fans and do it both ways till they met again in the middle, do it again, and then it got to a certain point by, by the door handle where, where there's, there's a wall right next to it, which you know separates the houses and the gardens, so the door is right next to this wall, so as it gets to this door handle um a it kind of pulled it, his hands away a bit. That they were together at this point. It was like as as if he crossed his fingers over. Right, clasped them. No, he hadn't clasped them. No, the flat. All right. Okay, yeah, but yeah, he's yeah. crossing his fingers over, and he held it there for a few seconds, and it, it looked like he'd taken something from the door casing, and off it all, all down the path. Well, this other one's still looking around, all suspicious looking, and and he leant on the wall. Did this alien, you know, as if he were talking to this other one, and then I woke up yeah. to me alarm going off to get up for work. So all that day, I was thinking, what a strange dream that was. 
Um, I get home from work that night. I'm taking me because I, I wear uniform for the job that I'm in, and I'm taking my uniform off, and I look out <laughs> of the door, <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, yeah, but I've got blind, so it'll like crack it, you know. <laughs> And that's, I heard a strange car coming up the street because you usually tend to know what cars. Yeah, because yours the is a dead end, end, isn't it? It's just like um, there's no way, it's not a through road. No, uh, no. Uh, like one house up or a couple of houses, we've got a little bit of a square and there's nowhere to go. You, the, the people that drive in there are generally visiting or live there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it never gets really noise. Yeah. So, um, you know, the engine noises and stuff. Um, so I heard this noise of this guy's a boom 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 with music blasting out and what have you so I thought well that ain't one of our lot who live up here I mean there's only 25 hours it's so rarely come on yeah um so I looked out and it were a red it looked like a red punter uh so it'd yeah be, it'd be a, a, probably a Corsa <laughs> probably a Corsa yeah <laughs> it's on. It's a big exhaust pipe anyway so getting back to it uh <laughs> So these two Asian lads, one was sat in the passenger side and the other one got out of the driver's side and walked up the garden path that the same everything was just similar. Um so he walks up the garden path to the door, it feels round the door casing as the other one was sat in the car, look with his head out of the window looking up and down the street, looking round, looking suspicious. Um, so the other one gets to the door casing, it feels round door casing, takes from it, puts it in, in his pocket, walks down the path, uh, leans on the wall, just like the other alien did in the dream. Uh-huh. It, the bo- it, it gets back in the car and they went, and I thought, and it just hit me, and I thought, the, the aliens were showing me something there that had actually taken place the uh, day after. Yeah. What What do you think to that now? What, what do you think that they were showing you, or can you figure that I out? Don't think, I don't Well, I, I can only assume that there were drugs. There were drug dealers, or they, whoever it was, number 15, was um, dealing these drugs, and he'd shoved them in the dark casing. But it were like they were, they were repeating they actually, the actions. They were repeating the actions yeah. the night before in my dream, yeah, yeah. So they'd actually shown me something before it actually happened. Yeah. Have you figured out what the point of that was? Well, I don't think it'd be drug dealing, do you? No, I don't think it. Is. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. Me. But when I look back at it, <laughs> you uh, think it was an alien uh, um, hand off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet for them before you. <laughs> no, but when I th- look back and I think, well, when when I try to put all my events together and I think, do you know, when the flying one, when they said you'll need to learn this, yeah, I, that's about. I, I know that's a part of it. I don't think the drugs are up to do with no, it. No, but it's like when but, I, when you're telling me that, right? You're telling me that you've seen this happen and then you've seen it happen again in real life. It's like, yeah. oh, what was the point? We've got to try and figure out. Why would they do that? Are they trying to tell you that they can uh, foresee the future or what? Yeah. You know, like, um, you know, it's like what, what's the purpose of that display? You know, yeah. there could have been a reason. And this is what I think. Like, you know, when I've had an experience or whatever, I remember something. I think, well, what was the point of that? Why would they do that? What What am I supposed to glean from yeah. that? You know, um, yeah. so it was obviously. They were showing you that for a reason. Yeah. But, um, just kind of, you know, what what the, what the reasons could be. I don't know, Guy. What do you think? Yeah. Guy. Well, yeah, reasons. Uh, <clears throat> you don't really know any reasons, really. Mm. You know but what I, I mean? I think if you were going to do something like that, why? I mean, what would be the purpose of it? If you could, okay, I can manipulate time. Or can predict the future, or uh, what was the, you know, like um, it, I don't know. It's just so perplexing as to why that particular scenario, and not somebody else just coming in from work and you know yeah. repeating a normal sort of situation. Uh, 
you know, why why is drug dealers? <laughs> I don't think they're. I don't think they were actually showing me drugs. You know, oh, no, 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 drugs. no. Well, the, um, the experience is always significant. Yeah, and it, it was the flying bit were part of it. They taught me how to fly years before that. Mm. But what was it? It's got to be foreseen future. Then I'm at that. That's the only thing I can think of. Wow. It's just so mind-boggling. Yeah. You know. Yeah. When you try, because, you know, things need to make sense, don't they? And, okay, we can all say, oh, it's a dream, or it's this, that, and the other, or whatever. But, you know, if even dreams, when they say, oh, dreams are messages, or dreams are this, that, and the other, it's just so vivid. Uh, oh, so they're not dreams, are they? We know this. But, you know, if we take things, right, if we say, okay, just let's, assume that they are aliens or interdimensionals and this is really real and this is really happening. What is the purpose of all of this? You know, mm. what is it leading to? Why are we kind of like, uh, we've been exposed to it all our lives, but we don't remember until a certain age. And then we become, when we acknowledge it, we become so consumed by it. It's almost, uh, you know, it's like an addiction or... Um, you just can't leave it alone. It's, it's you can't leave it alone because it's part of you. It's been there since you were young. It's part of you. Yeah. So I mean, how can you leave something behind you that? Yeah, it won't leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. Even if you try. But you know, when you think beyond. I don't think I'd want them to leave me alone now. <laughs> it's like uh, there's a guy that I talked to Andrew Ackley, and he he said to me, he put on a post about he said ufos infect experiences like a virus and need yeah. constant drug treatment to keep it under control the drug is self-administered through obsession the only mm -hmm. cure is through establishing the truth about them you know and it's yeah. like it is absolutely, absolutely right it is like an infection yeah. and you know it's like when i've been talking to people like that when i lived uh, in leeds and I moved into the street and I met a couple of women who were really kind of quite sensitive and open to this sort of thing and had weird experiences themselves. But uh, they'd forgotten about most of it and, you know, had not really thought about it for years. I kind of provoked, obviously, because I was so open about it. And they'd come yeah. round to my house having a coffee. Kelly stood at the sink washing a cup up. Mel sat at my kitchen table. And I've got a massive kitchen. You've seen that kitchen. It was huge, wasn't it? And I, so, like, we were sort of in a triangle. I was near... Uh, I was kind of like stood in the middle of the kitchen with Mel to my left and Kelly to the right and this dish just landed in the middle of the kitchen as all these bits just flew about without even stopping for breath I just carried on talking and picked it all up and they're both looking at me like <laughs> what they doing? Sasha it just flew across the fucking kitchen <laughs> like that <laughs> you know it was like oh that was like I didn't even know him very well then but then they started talking and then, you know, each one of them were kind of figuring out some other stuff that had gone in their lives. And I used to think, and then one of them was having these experiences um, and there's like sleep paralysis and all the weird blah and all this kind of stuff she was explaining to me. And I was like, I've had all that, I've had all that. And I'm like, um, am I like an infection? You know, and you think, well, if I come into contact with people and they're maybe of interest, does it start happening to them? But then they start yeah. going, Oh, I remember when I was five and something blah blah blah, and I think, God, oh, thank God for that, is that me? you know. But it, it just it makes you sort of like shy away from people because a you think they're not going to understand or they're going to take the piss, or yeah. b it's going to start happening to them, you know. Yeah. And especially when they've got kids and stuff like that, you know, you just think, oh. <laughs> 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 They're always there. She is later, but when do, when you have them, when you actually have the dreams, are that traumatic. You like wake up with a hot sweat, but <laughs> try to crawl you know. out of your own skin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, oh God, yeah. So in this dream, this was last year as well. Um, <laughs> I'm in this dream, and I'm in America. I don't know why. There's a couple of them that where I'm in America. I don't know why it's America. I've never been to America, but I know it is. 
there's this little old lady and she's got a, a, she's only tiny she's like a tiny little old but she's right she's horrible to get what i mean yeah right <laughs> don't touch that don't touch that sort of thing yeah and i mean i don't know whether it's an house or a shed or i don't know because it every time i look round, a, a wall has a different theme do you understand what I'm saying? What do you mean, like a different colour or pattern or...? No, it's the same. It's like, one at walls, it looks like I'm in a shade. Another wall, it looks like I'm in a front room. Oh. Another one looks like I'm in a car. Oh. And another one, it's like outside somewhere. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I know I'm inside somewhere. But I don't know where, because every, every one of these walls has a different theme to it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's a, and, and there's this big like basket, and I don't know whether it's on something or well, it, it's above floor anyway. It's a couple of feet above the floor. And she said, and I said, oh look, some baby rabbit. She said, yeah, would you like one in in this strong American accent? I don't know. Do you have guy? Do you have different accents in America? Obviously you do, don't you? <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> He's probably gone to sleep. <laughs> He's gone back, it? All right, okay. They'll have different accents. Yes, yeah, they We're very strong, yeah. So, um, I looks in this and she says, "Would you, would you like one of these baby rabbits?" And I said, "No." I said, "But you know, what are them things there?" And the, you, I sort of skin. Um, they were grey, grey skin, but you, all I could see were the heads. And, the one, and these rabbits were huddled together with these things, these grey things. I couldn't see what they were at the time mm. uh, until one of them kind of, you know, they all shuffle about a bit when they, they get uncomfortable. Mm. Um, and when it looked up, it were a, a baby grey. And it was so ugly. <laughs> it was really ugly. <laughs> and she said... And I said, oh, but I want one of them, even though it were ugly, it was so cute. Uh, and I said, I want one of them. And she's, all of a sudden, she just turned really nasty. You're not having one of them. They don't belong to you. Oh, I was like, what? You can have one of these rabbits, but you are not having one of them. And, and she said, and if this gets out, I will have you killed. And... Um, these don't belong to you. They don't belong to me. They are here. Um, I am looking after them. I've been told to look after them. And they belong to the government, none of us. And that's it. And I woke up in a hot sweat. And I was like, what? That were it? Mm. So. How weird. Yeah. That's How it. Weird. So. You okay? What did you say, Kay? Well, uh, how old were you? In that one, for, it was last year, 41. <laughs> Just not to <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> Well, not only if I tell everybody, now I've told everybody. About it. I'm going to be killed now. I'm going to get killed and the, them, them rabbits and baby aliens they want that government. Yeah. How bizarre. I'm trying to think of uh, any sort of significance with aliens and rabbits, but... I'd... Underground. I mean... Um, Living underground. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure... Friend, uh, yeah, it could be representing something else too. Oh, mm. yeah. maybe your mind could some kind of rabbit thing going on, and I can't remember now. Yeah, you did. You once told me about that, Sasha, about that, about rabbits and aliens. When I told you about the uh, yeah, there's something rattling around in my head. I must have put it to one side. Yeah. I can't remember. I mean, I, do you know what struck me today? Somebody put a picture of an owl on my page, and uh, it had like big golden eyes and what have you, round pupils, sort of little funky ears. And it struck me, you know, that owls actually, you know, when we have this sort of archetypal connection with the 
eat greys and the big black eyes. And, you know, people say, oh, I saw Owl with the big black eyes. But they don't actually have black eyes. You know what I mean? What? Uh... Owls. They, this one had like, golden eyes, you know. Yeah. They don't, like, have big black eyes. They actually have eyes, you know, colours. Do they? I don't yeah. know. I don't know, because I'm... Uh... No, I don't know. Never seen one close. Well, maybe though. that's just how maybe that's just how people process it. Uh, they see a gray, and their their mind is like, "Fuck you, Janelle." <laughs> but you know, I did have a really weird one um, about uh, what you know. You know, when the volcano went off and there were all the flights were grounded. Mm. It was in about May that year, um, and I was out sort of in Humberside, in a little village outside Hull. Um, and I got to the pub and we were out the back having a cig and I was looking and I saw this light sort of looked like it was coming down but you, you know sometimes you can't tell things going up, down, whatever you know anyway it came down and then it started to kind of like move towards us and then it went back up again and I went what was that and he went oh it might be the helicopter or, you know it wasn't the helicopter because there was no noise and I said, well, it wasn't a plane because the volcano, there's no flights, everything's grounded. It was like, mm. oh, yeah. And then after kicking out time, decided to go out. It was like a, up from the pub, there was a school, and at the back of the school there was a field. There's all picnic tables and what have you. So I sat on the picnic tables. I was watching these three lights, kind of like corners. It was like they were doing this sort of square, but there were only three of them. But they were going diagonally and then straight across to the next corner and then kind of over from right to left but always in this square, and watched them for ages, and that's all they were doing, and then all of a sudden, all these owls started hooting, and it sounded like there were about 20 of them, there was some, like a big uh, bit of woods uh, to our right, and in front of us there was just this big field, um, and they all was like, woo, 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 all of them all started at the same time, and, and there was this noise that was just kind of went like, whoosh, and it sounded like a big sheet of plastic being blown a- across the top of grass. And uh, I just stood up and said, let's get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> I swear to God, I was, didn't want to run, right? But I wanted to run. And all that happened was my <laughs> ass cheeks were completely clenched and I just couldn't do anything <laughs> but mint out of there. You know, I was so scared but didn't want to completely panic because I thought probably if I, like, if I run, I'm going to lose plot now, you know what I mean? Mm. So just scooted off back to the house, which was just opposite where the schoolyard was. Uh, and, you know, that was it. It's like, this thing, okay, I've not seen an owl. I've never seen anything like uh, an owl staring at me through my window. I've never seen an owl in my bedroom. Never had an owl anything apart from yeah. hearing them and that happening. We were watching these three lights, you know what I mean? Just moving and just swapping places in the square. And then all that just kicked off, you know. So I, I, there's no kind of imagery with it for owls, but just that thing, you know what I mean? So that it, it kind of corroborates, but also, also so completely different, you know, because there was no seeing the owl, just hearing them. Mm. And everyone reports hit, seeing them, you know. So well, I don't know. All right. Like I've never seen an owl close up, so... But my my little lad is terrified of him, for whatever reason. He came up to you. Oh, you right? oh yeah. And he, went, he said, owls can talk, you know. Owls can talk, yeah. <laughs> so and that was, that was the first time I ever saw him, wasn't it? Yeah. And I just said, owls can talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that just happened. <laughs> Oh, yeah, one of them moments. <laughs> what did you just say? Did you say that? <laughs> you saw me, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what else do you want to talk about? Because I know you've got quite a lot of stuff. Oh, no. No, I've just got a mouthful of curry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're all right. Huh. I've got mine in front of me, right, teasing me. <laughs> and I'm, I wanted a drink of coffee, but there's no one available. <laughs> and David's text message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, dear. Sorry, Ellis, Sasha, I don't know, because there's that much. Right, what about the three glowing orange... Oh, yeah. That was last year as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've never seen... You know, I've never seen these orange globes. I've never seen all orangey in the sky, except them things that just stand up. What do they call them? Uh, the lanterns. Yeah, that's it. I've only ever seen them. You know, that looks out like these orange globes, but they don't look like orange globes at all, because they're not globes. But, uh, yeah, I had this um, dream, and where I live, there's a school, well, there's a school, oh, God, there's two schools where I live, but the one uh, where it's taken place, I, I, I never go near that area, I have no reason to go near that area, yeah. Um uh, I think the last time I might have walked on by there was when I was 15, mm. 15 year old, yeah, because it was a snicket to me, upper school that I went to. Um, and in this dream, um, these three orange clubs um, landed on the school field. It was in, all, all in darkness, but these orange gloves like, had a glow to them. Yeah. Just a slight glow, they weren't bright. Um, but what, one was separated to the other two. It was like, there were three gloves, but even though two were together and one was separated from it, um, in the middle one, um, kind of, the centre of it kept kind of pulsating, opening up and closing again. Um, it did this a good three to five times before it actually stayed open and I could see straight through it, um, the grass at the other side of it. Mm. And then I saw a, a grey um, come, not through it, through this hole in this globe. Um, it, was like, it, it just appeared in the globe and walked out of it. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, like as if it appeared from nowhere. Um, and what? Uh, and I'm walking on this snicket um, with my boyfriend at the time, and this alien's walking down the field. You know, it's like a, a banking sort of thing. Yeah. And I'm looking at him, and this alien's looking at me, and I think it, it, it's really happy. I felt how happy he was, mm -hmm. uh, just as happy as I was to see him. And I've never felt that in a dream at all, being happy about seeing him. Um, but. It was it was so strange. It was like we had this bond, this really strong bond. And I said, oh, look, Kev, I said, look at them three globes there. And he went, they are globes. They're, um, what do we call them things that you pass on? Um, space offers. Space offers. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, don't be stupid. They're not globes. Space offers. And I went, can you, well, can you see them horn things? Well, on the space offers, like two horns that you all done, I went there. Yeah. And he says, yeah. And I'm going, no, you can't because the globes and it's going to space off us. I said, oh, right, I'm not, I'm not having this. You know, you're arguing with me and I know what I'm saying. <laughs> not so, right. <laughs> yeah. So, well, well, that was another thing. <laughs> so, this alien is walking towards us and I said, well, can you see the alien, the great... And by this time, the alien had walked down the banking there's a fence between us, about six foot, a grey, just a metal fence. Yeah. And, um, it's about five feet away, and as we're walking along this snicket, it's walking at the side of us. But I could feel it, I could, even though it had no expression on its face, uh. it, was, it was like laughing at its conversation. I could feel the laughter as well. Right, so I get Ella says, Oh, well, can you say alien? And he says, Well, there's no alien there, it's just a little old woman. And I'm going, No, it's an alien. I said, If you can't say that as an alien, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> and he went, Well, there's something wrong with you because it's a little old woman. No, it wasn't having it at all. But yeah, okay. yeah, Paula, I wonder if he was seeing the little old woman that you saw with the rabbits. That, but do you know what? When I asked him the day after, um, I said, what did, you know, uh, in this dream sort of thing, 
And I said, what would you describe it? Well, I drew the picture of the actual train taking place. And I said, well, how would you describe that woman if you could describe that woman in the dream that I had? And he went, oh, she'd be about four foot tall with, like, her hair tied up and long and silvery. And, and I thought, do you know then? And I thought, that just sounds like the woman that I had in the dream with the rabbits. The rabbits. Even though he didn't know about this dream that I had, he were only in it. So, but you uh, asked him in like real life or in the dream? Yeah, I asked him in real life. I said, "All oh, right, okay." Yeah. So you told him that. So how would you? Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I said, how would you describe a little old woman, a, a sweet little old woman? This is all about four foot tall or something, right? Sweet and deep, uh, tied up and all grey, and you know what I mean, and. I thought, you know what, it, yeah, it does. It sounded like the woman with the rabbit. So, anyway, right, back to what? So, yeah, so I'm getting back to that walking on the end of the um, alleyway and fence between me and the grey. And, but then the, the, the fence in turns, because it's, it's a school field, basically, so it, it goes. So the alien can't go any further than that. Yeah. Um, so we continued, and all of a sudden it shouted, and it's, wa- it's waving one arm in the air, and it shouted, Paula, I love you. <laughs> How strange is that? <laughs> oh. And then I kind of woke up then, and it was like, what? And I haven't had anything really since that. Well, you know, the orange globe thing, um, you know, about when I was with my little lad's dad, yeah, we had quite a lot of sightings together, and he'll never deny it. You know what I mean? Even now, we we'll talk about it when I see him. Um, you know, and I talk about things like, uh, or, you know, whatever to do with Junior and, and what he said, and uh, um, you know, he, he never, you know, he never disputes it because he he can't. He, he was always pretty sensitive, or you know, like some weird things going on in his life anyway, sort of when he was a little kid and his his dad died when he was five and his dad used to work yeah. on his dad used to work on the tugboats, um, building like, you know, the bringing all the materials in to build the hump um yeah. and pulling the, the boats in and out and what have you. Um and he was always on the radio. And when he died, uh, he found this radio in a cupboard and mm. he used to talk to his dad on it. And uh his mum had a word with a friend of, uh, well, it was there, and you know, his dad's friend, and he was talking about something or other um, uh, about, I can't remember what it was now, some or other. But basically, what he'd said was, "Oh, like uh, my dad's radio, because that just went black. All of a sudden, he stopped talking to his dad. I think because his mum had found out that he had it or whatever. Right. So he was always been quite sensitive like that, you know." So anything that's gone on, and I say to him, he, he, you know, he never, he never disputes it. But we had one sighting when uh, I was stood at the front of the house having a cigarette, and I saw this kind of white light coming towards me. And I thought it was an aeroplane because it's kind of on a, it's the traffic stacking up at Leeds and Bradford Airport. It yeah, circles, and they used to sort of circle around the top of the hill where we lived. Yeah, and I kind of initially thought it was, you know, a plane. And then when I realised it was like a boomerang ship, so I shouted him out and I said to him, "What can you say there?" And he went, "Looks like a boomerang." And where it would, if it was a plane, it would come over the top, and then sort of loop round to our right. It just went off to the left. It just went off to the yeah. east. And then we were out in the back garden uh, one night. I think we used to, have, you know, we had a massive garden, so we used to have fires out there quite a lot. Uh, so, so kind of with our back to the house and I saw this orange glow it was like a, a, an egg shaped orange glow but it was like say you know the old orange street like so they're kind of a little bit more yellow and brighter the yeah. old orange it was like just yeah. the glow there was nothing in the middle of it it was a lantern because there was nothing it was just that orange glow like like the glow of a street light had just left yeah. the post and floated off by without the, the light in the middle. That's what they were like, them globes on the school field. Yeah. It, it's not a bright glow. It, it, it was like, I don't know, about 50 feet above the ground, just going over the field at the back of the house. 
So yeah. it wasn't even it wasn't even really high up. It was really low. It was quite close. It was quite big, and it was just an orange glow. Nothing yeah. in the middle. There was no shape, no object. Just a glow of light, you know. Yeah. So I've seen one of them as well, love. But it just mm-hmm. went off to the right, back off to the east again. You know, but it's like where the one at the front of the house went off to the east, this one at the back of the house went off to the east. Oh. Uh, you know, and yeah. I had, um, before all this, uh, probably about 2006, before all the lanterns uh, started being um, a big deal, I was getting a lot of reports because I was a uh, features writer for UFO Data uh, magazine, which was an actual paper publication. And... Um, all these sightings and some of them from friends and like because they like to go camping they're outdoorsy types you know um about orange lights in the sky that were kind of not floating around and you know being all vague but she's uh for vicky she said that um one orange light just came from left to right and stopped and yeah. then another one came from left to right and stopped just a little bit before and just a little bit above and then another one came and it was just a little bit before and a little bit above the one previous and another two came below the first one, a little bit before and below, and so they formed like an arrowhead. Yeah. And then they all flew off together. Now that is not um, lanterns, right? It's no, exactly. Absolutely not even possible. So then you know, and then I had another. I can't remember them all. Uh, I'd have to look in the magazine, but um, I'd, I think I've reported three different things in one article about these orange lights. And then, yeah. about five or six months later, the entire sky is flooded with these lanterns. And I'm thinking, why has that happened all of a sudden? You know what I mean? I'm, there's obviously, no, I'm not the only person getting reports in the country. So there's loads of people, that have been get, if these things were up there, would have been getting reports of them. And so, you know, then, it's, then all of a sudden we've got all these things and everyone's going, ah, it's lanterns, without even looking. So I'm yeah. saying, because I know these are not all lanterns, you need to check the wind direction, which way will they go in, and check the wind direction, and, uh, you know, and, and if they're going in the direction, to sort of kind of like, because you can get, um, you can find websites that give you uh, kind of like a history of wind directions at any one time, uh, kind of Doppler, whatever. Uh, and I used to refer them to and come back and come back and go, no, it was completely, you know, it was going this way. They'd be adamant it was like two or three and they did this particular manoeuvre. And I'll go, well, well, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't lanterns, was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just thought it was interesting. All those sightings were coming in and then all of a sudden, you know, we've got all these things flying about. So, um, but yeah, I've never seen any in the sky. I've only seen them in the dream. That's it. Uh, well, this is it. You see, I've been awake when I've seen them. Mm. And I never used to believe people that saw UFOs all the time. You know, I don't see them all the time. But I see them pretty often. And I'm not on my own every yeah. time, you know what I mean? In fact, I think there's only been one instance where I've seen something and I was on my own. And it was like a white egg shape. Again, it just kind of went slowly. I was looking out the window. I couldn't sleep. I was having a really hard time in my life. And I was just sort of staring out the window, middle of the night, and uh, I just got over the top. And I felt really sad. I, was, I felt, oh, come back, don't leave me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be here. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I mean, I've seen it when I've been camping, uh, one kind of floating out from behind the cloud and then going back behind it. And I was just sort of staring at it for ages, and so my brain went, Sasha, that's not normal. Stop staring yeah. at it and react. You know, um, yeah. I said to friend Leanne, I went, Leanne, and she was rummaging around in the tent. I said, do you want to see a UFO? She went, yeah. I went, God, there's one over here. And she backed out of the tent, she looked up and she saw it and she went, is that it? <laughs> 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 it's like, what were you expecting? Like, you know, like, Mastery, we're millions of lives. Six, so. nine. God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just sort of floated like a feather. These three lights, they almost like almost pink. And then it just sort of, faded to nothing mm. and she was like really disappointed <laughs> <laughs> I was gutted I was like oh so I was like, well, I oh my and, you know yeah. that's the ones with the pictures that I've got on Facebook I took them with my friend's camera because I was at her house so she 
they all me, you know. And then, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I've, it's, it, I've very rarely been you know, when something goes off, so I don't know. <laughs> Guy, are you asleep? He's still with you. <laughs> I'm here, man. I'm just listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are breaking up a lot on my end, so I'm only catching like parts of the conversation. Well, uh, you've been breaking up on us, and I, pa- Paula keeps I'm going. Not... Little, Paula goes a little bit twangy um, every now uh, and again. It's not, yeah, it's not your guys' fault. I asked, uh, I asked Dave what it sounded like, and he said it sounds fine. So I think because you've got some funky weather, we've got some particularly. We've got. Uh, Two serious weather fronts clashing in. Yeah. Pins of movement uh, right over the top of where we are. Uh, so I think if it is sounding funny to anybody, it's, it's purely weather conditions. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, Dev said it sounds all right. Apart, you know, I know we've got a little bit of ring thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's too bad. It's not like last week. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I'll, oh, I'll like no. hear uh, a good portion of it, and then I'll like miss the payoff. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to listen to that for the punchline. <laughs> I need closure. <laughs> Don't we all, dear? <laughs> I think that's what we're going to have to learn to live without. You know, I used to say. There is no closure until disclosure. And I thought, even with this disclosure, they're only going to go, yeah, yeah, all right, well, uh, there's E.T. somewhere out in space. So so how many mm. more questions do you think uh, would have to be asked if there was disclosure? Like the Pandora's box that would, uh, you know, open up and just... Everybody would come out of the woodwork. Every question you could imagine, uh, and they would have to answer. You know, or lie about it. That's why that's never going to happen. <laughs> oh no, no, no way. Well, you know, it's like that because then it's like, oh yeah. Well, what would they say? Uh, all right, there's, we have found life elsewhere in the universe, but it's too far away to be bothered about. We've detected a signal or something. Or are they going to go, oh, my God, they're here. Oh, my God, it's public. Be scared. But it's okay. We will save you. Uh, oh, you know, they'd have a motive for it, and they would never tell the absolute truth anyway. Well, what does it matter? If the Why give people... up all that power? That's it. Mm-hmm. Why give up all that power of holding on to uh, that type of information? You know, that's that's uh, above anything you could probably, uh, aside from proving the existence of God, mm-hmm. uh, sitting on information that, that we're not alone, we're being visited and stuff like that, actually having the technology in your hands. And who's going to give that up? Because people want them to. Nobody's going to give that up. Yeah. I wouldn't give it up if I knew it. But I probably like, wouldn't give it up. We don't care about disclosure anyway. No, because we know anyway. We know. We know. <laughs> this is my yeah, disclosure. Yeah, a lot of people, I am yeah, a lot of people do. Now. Disclosing, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, well, why are you waiting for acknowledgement? Oh, and then what they're going to do, put in some kind of, like, uh, 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 psycho- psychological package of recovery. Would any of us trust them? <laughs> no, we won't. We know. Oh, yeah, okay, you'll fix my mind. Uh now, I think, really, if it ever did come about that it became public knowledge, everyone would be turning to us, you know what I mean, for, 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 for answers. Oh, but, I mean, no, we won't be going to them and saying, oh, were... please, please uh, Mr. Camoron, uh, tell us about this, that, and the other, and he would just go, blah, 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 lie, 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 uh, poo falling out of his face. You know, they weren't going to go to them because they know that they're absolute liars and that's when we will come into our own. <laughs> It's all mm-hmm. just on. Yeah, we don't hate you. Come on, we'll fix you. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Some of you are like the anal probing. <laughs> it's not all bad. I do. 
<laughs> don't happen to girls it only happens to boys <laughs> and, and that's because uh, they're, they're fixing all the genetic doodads in your prostate you see mm. so uh, you know <laughs> have you got any other um, doodads you want to tell us Paul oh, I'm tired love <laughs> Well, that's all right, because we've only got a few minutes left anyway. Really? Yeah. Uh, what time is it? It's nine minutes to one. Really? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Sasha. Go on then. I'll save it for next show, because I'm really tired. <laughs> on your little job. I'm absolutely knackered. I'll tell you what, I that's still it. can't get over what happened to us. Today. Oh, today, yeah. How the hell we did that journey in an, right, in an hour when we got lost twice, and how yeah. the hell we even got lost the second time, or oh, ended up back where we'd just come from. Oh, that, I tell you what, that has absolutely blagged my head. Yeah. I know. I just couldn't. Totally. I, I'm just like, like, it was so surreal. The rest of the journey back after that, because we were also, oh yeah, blah blah blah, da, 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 da. how the fuck did we get here? Yeah, I know. It was just like, mm. and then we both felt a bit poorly when we got in. I just, well, I just felt really sort of spaced out and a bit dizzy, but uh, you know, I've done that journey loads of times. I don't feel like that, but it was like it was yeah. just that the absolute head fuck of going round a bend and being. Four miles away, where yeah. we just kind of driven from. Yeah, and there were no reason when we actually went, we didn't turn off anywhere. We turned, and that sign said Liverpool. Liverpool, and then before in the way, we were at wrong side of no, road. We were in Manchester. We were in Manchester. Town centre, yeah. Yeah. Film it. Film your journeys. Do you know what? It's funny because I've got a friend, Wynn Keach, and he's got, uh, he calls it the dash cam. And uh, he lives out in Whitby, near Filingdales, which is the uh, tracking centre for the RAF. Um, and it was absolutely thick with snow, ridiculously stupid, and he's out in the middle of nowhere, and it's thick. And he's gone out, and he's, like, clearing the roads because he needs to get somewhere, whatever. And he's got his dash cam running, and he actually filmed, you know, there's a rock the meteorite that might have crashed through a hedge. He actually filmed it going over the top of him. He's just mm. there digging away. Uh, just uh, kind of like lights up the area a little bit. And I'm looking at it and I went, Are you sure that was a bloody uh, meteorite? It just seemed kind of like, a bit, you know, steady away, nice and bright. Uh, but then all these, oh, we found a hole in a hedge. And look at this hole. There's no trace of anything ever landed it. If a meteorite or any debris from anywhere had gone through a hedge and punched a hole, Lot, there would be some forensic evidence of it, but there was none. So I don't believe that hole was anything to do with it. But uh, yeah, and because he had that camera on his dash, just filming away, then he caught that. You know, so you never fucking know, do you? What the hell? You know. <laughs> oh, Sasha. What? Have you used your telescope yet, love? No, I haven't. But you know what? I'm going to get it out for the 15. Because oh. that uh, meteor, the asteroid of doom, if it tips. It's going to come back in seven years and kill us all. If it hits this gravity ball, panic. Let's put weapons in space to save us all from the astronauts. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we're going to get it out and uh, get up and get it sorted. Um, Dave's friend has got one, and so he knows what to do. So uh, I'm going to Photoshop some terrible images and blackmail and get it to come down to do it quickly. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. Oh, yeah, that's the best one I've got. <laughs> to make sure that it actually happens. <laughs> mm. But we are going to do a really high tech sky watch soon, uh, boys and girls. Um, there's I've talked to Richard Lenny and Win Keach. Uh, Simon Parks is interested. You're coming out to Paula. Um, and basically, uh, Richard Lenny has got um, Generation Two night vision goggles. Uh, Win has got super duper technology uh, magic type I don't know what um, and I've got a quite a large telescope a tracker telescope that with a 
a notebook type thing that will record everything it sees and it will uh, clock onto any moving object and, and follow it basically. Oh, nice. uh, and I can record that. I need to get a little camera for that, but um, that can happen. So what we're going to do is we're all going to get together with all that stuff um, and have a sky watch somewhere out, kind of like Filey Whitby uh, Bridgeway, because I've seen some pretty weird stuff through binoculars and there's a lot of reports out there, uh, you know, because so, it's the coast. So there's no sodium glare from the sea. Hurrah. Um, so it's pretty dark. So we're going to do that soon. So I'll uh, let people know because, you know, obviously we don't want like 8 million people coming, but it'd be good to have a... Uh, a group of fiends <laughs> doing that would be good fun, I reckon. Yeah, you can be like Richard Greer and, uh, or, uh, what's that? That'll never happen. Uh, 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 Richard, De Rich is, it, is it Richard? No, Stephen Greer. No, not Hope. I'm talking about Greer, how he has his little sky watches. Charging no, people like, like no, no, no. No, 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 no. Oh. How do you can't charge people? <laughs> I know. It was a joke. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, we have to channel the Palladies, and they're all... And where is that? Where is it at? Well, it's going to be on the uh, East Coast somewhere. Oh, right, yeah. You know, it's a lot... I, I, I went to say my friend Emma's, and uh, we'd kind of like been out it's somewhere. We'd seen this white light coming over to the, towards the house, and I said, what's that? She went, oh, I don't know. And we watched it thinking it would be an aeroplane. You know, they've got the lights on, and sometimes at funny angles, they look like, oh, it's just one light, and then you see them, and they go, meh. Well, it came out just above the house and it just went off. There was no light and it didn't go out. And she went, oh. Because <laughs> right. she's not shy about all this stuff either. She's totally on board with it. Um, and then we'd have a bit of a, you know, a merry afternoon. And she'd got some binoculars and they were just by the kitchen door. So, and I'd gone out and I was having a smoke and I'm looking at the sky through the binoculars. And I've seen all these things moving about and I'm thinking, no way. So I seen this one move, and I thought that can't be. It must be me moving. So kind of like in the right, I picked this star, this point of light to focus on to make sure I wasn't moving. Sure enough, this thing, this little light, moved towards it. And then as it got to be like from obviously in my distance from this star that I was using as a point of reference, the star mm. that I was using as a point of reference moved up. With the other one, and I was oh, like, I swear yeah, to God, great? <laughs> my back hit that kitchen wall, the outside of it, like, honestly, like I'd been shot. It was, I was so shocked, do you know what I mean? And then I started getting scared, and I heard someone around the corner, it was probably just a cat or something, I was like, <gasps> you know what I mean? Pro <laughs> They're like 80 million miles away or whatever, and I'm like, sort of like this little kitchen doorway in bridge but i'll tell you what a proper cactus <laughs> but i couldn't stop looking and i was seeing them like twos and threes and i thought no way this has got to be us doing stuff there. there can't be that many just going wee flying around where i if i can see them through binoculars anybody can see them through anything else and you know it's just i don't know i don't know maybe i'm just mental I think I'm quite comfortable. Yeah, with that. I would I would agree with that. I think I, I, have, I think I'm I'm happy with that. It's because I'd rather be mental than it be real. Or would I? I don't know anymore. It's kind of fascinating, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like even though it just gives me the biggest things ever, I kind of think, well, oh, how you know awesome is this? I could be like. Uh, just like I used to be, completely oblivious to everything, just work a day, da 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 da, with no magic in my life, you know, mm. and no awesome people. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't think I'd swap it, but sometimes I would really love a day off, you know, yeah. not to have it in my head, not to have it in my heart, not just have it in the background, just totally free of it, without any anything of it at all. Just like no, I'm you'd on, be lonely. For one day, yeah, I, I for one day, you'd miss like it. I got a Morrison's and I think you'd be bored, Sasha. Aliens' heads when I'm looking at avocados. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, oh. And I look at the, how can people say there's no aliens? I mean, look at how yeah. weird that is. Right? and and these little insect, uh, insects. Uh, I just said, oh, and people have no imagination for aliens. 
or interdimensionals or whatever they are. But anyway, get some imagination, people. <laughs> right, <laughs> should we wrap it up? Yeah. Yeah. We might have been abdicated. Yeah, today was, today was nuts. I can't, I can't believe I made it back for the show. <laughs> well, I don't even know how the went on getting here. It, mm-hmm. The strange remains the same, and that is all I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Paula. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Paula. Thank you, Guy. <laughs> Welcome. And Guy, Hi. Guy, you can have a go soon. It's your turn soon. What? I, for the for the guests <laughs> and stuff, because I've just completely hogged everything. Uh, 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 whatever. I'm, I'm really excited to anything. <laughs> I want to do this. I want my own way. But then, yeah, no, but I need to get off aliens and stuff like that. I need to get me adding some other stuff because, you know, one track mind. Not track yeah, mind. yeah, yeah, I know. You yeah. know what I mean? And I need diverting, actually, need knocking off cars, you know, like Tron. <laughs> Another subject. Tron. Right. Okay, guys, let's go. All right. I will see you later. Yeah, au revoir. Toodle. Bye. 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 Bye.